Hello, everyone. It's great to be here. So my name is Sydney Rapset, and I'll be taking you through some pretty exciting things that we're working on. But before I get there, um, I wanted to you know, expand on what Gus was talking about, you know, how every technology, every company is becoming a technology company. And that starts to show up in very interesting places, some of the places you might not have thought about. So I'm going to talk about that in the context of the journey that folks are on to modernize applications. So think about, for example, how in agriculture, you know, self-driving technology is, is, is particularly interesting. You know, tractors now can till the soil to a specific depth, plant seeds at a specific depth, and, and make their way around the, the property you know, autonomously. That's pretty cool stuff. What about drone technology? Insurance companies are spending over a billion dollars this year to use drones that allow them to make faster decisions about claims, make better decisions about the risk profiles that they're willing to take on because they can send these drones over properties and take high-resolution pictures of what's actually over there. Very interesting stuff. And of course, there's the plethora of companies out there that allow you to buy X, buy product X, without ever having to leave the couch. Now, the other day I was watching uh, commercials on TV. I was watching a show and there were commercials in between, obviously. And three commercials in a row came on. They were all about buying something without ever having to leave the couch. And so, of course, I thought I was clever, and I was like, oh, well, what if I could buy a couch without ever having to leave the couch? <laughs> of course, I was devastated to learn that it already existed, so there goes my startup idea. All right. So, you know, the, the thing that's common across all these companies is they're leveraging technology in interesting ways to really drive, you know, the, 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 the customer experience to new levels. And as we talk to customers, I talk to a lot of customers, it's a, it's a, it's a great thing to do, especially in my role, I love it. Um, we see three common patterns um, in these organizations. There's, especially in you know, the enterprise, there oftentimes there's a lot of legacy applications out there. They're monolithic applications. And you know, based on our recent brand survey, over 60% of the applications in a given enterprise tend to be of the monolithic type. As folks are looking to modernize those applications, get more and more capabilities out of them, and deliver better features and capabilities to their customers, we start to see them taking on a more hybrid pattern. They start to peel off a few services, you know, things that need to maybe scale independently, or new features that they want to be able to, to augment this application with, or leveraging external services. That's often a, a, a thing that's done. You know, think about a retail website, where now you need to find a store locator you want a store locator service, and now you can leverage something like a Google Maps API to get that. And approximately 30% of the applications, you know, based on our brand survey, kind of fall into this category. They're monolithic to a large extent, but they also leverage you know, uh, uh, multiple services alongside it. And then finally, there's the, the luckiest category of all, you know, maybe for, for a technologist, the luckiest category, you know, the purely microservices application. You're not necessarily having to deal with you know, legacy. You're not necessarily having to deal with you know, monolithic application architectures. You're building services from scratch. You're building them um, to, to, to really deliver a thrilling experience to those users with very modern uh, technologies. And they tend to be very important applications. Um, but they're also a relatively small number of the total applications out there. I think that's fairly intuitive for folks that are in the space. Now, folks tend to be moving from left to right in this kind of uh, journey, uh, but not everyone's moving at the same pace. Not everyone's even moving all the way to the right. Depending on your needs, depending on your organization, purely microservices-based applications may or may not be the right thing for you. And so, you know, as I think about our product portfolio, that's what I do for a living, you know, we, we try to make sure that the solutions and products that we're delivering align well with the different types of applications, the different patterns that you have within your organization. So whether you're dealing with a monolithic application and you need to make sure that traffic or, or users get in and out of that application at the correct rate with the correct authentication and security wrapped around them, you know, the load balancing capabilities that we deliver and that whole portfolio of features is a very powerful and basic foundational uh, set of things we need to be able to do. As you start to leverage more and more services to deliver your application, those services communicate via APIs. And so being able to provide API gateway and API management capabilities to help you deliver those applications effectively with all the load balancing that goes around it is also very important. And then as you move to the microservices side of things, when I talk to customers, over half of our customers are already running microservices today. They may be very new, 
to doing it, but they still tend to be running microservices quite frequently. And as the complexity of those microservices environments increases, as they get to dozens or scores of individual services and tens of teams working on those services, things like service mesh technology and, and, and the ch challenges that show up with those services needing to communicate with all the interactions and dependencies that are going on there becomes interesting and important. And so having service mesh or east-west networking solutions in our portfolio is very important to us. So here is you know, really our thought process around how we want to make sure that whatever we're delivering from a product portfolio is really aligning with the things that organizations need to be able to deal with, whether it's in one of these buckets alone or as they move between the buckets. right? And as I think about the characteristics that the, the, the products need to take on, you could think of it kind of in the context of a, of a living organism. This was something that was mentioned last year at Conf, this concept of a living organism. Kind of vision-wise, we want to be able to have a solution that can grow as needed, that can adapt as needed, that can heal if and when needed. And so as we think about what we're building, we've made a lot of progress. We have a dynamic application gateway. That's what we're going to be announcing. Well, that's what we are announcing today. It's a dynamic application gateway solution that has all these great characteristics that allows you to really get the flexibility, the elasticity that you need to be able to deliver your application under any circumstances. It's flexible, it's agile. It can be one thing at a time or it can be many things at a time. You decide, you have the freedom to decide which capabilities need to be deployed and how and where to deploy them. It's a great unified story that gives you flexibility to do what you need to do. It's resilient and it's efficient. It can absorb spikes in demand. It can scale as it needs to. And we can recover as it needs to. It makes sure your applications are always working. And then finally, it has intelligence. It works in a distributed fashion. The individual instances can not only talk to each other, but they can talk to you as well. They talk to each other to share state, to share information, so that now you have a single fabric, a single meshed solution, where every instance knows what every other instance knows about what's going on. It's a very powerful you know, sharing of intelligence. And it also surfaces information to you, so you have understanding of what's actually happening in that environment as well. What's your how's your application being delivered, and how's that working for you? So it's all about maximizing performance and awareness there. Now, of course, that's what happens you know, at the data plane layer, um, traffic flowing through these devices. But then we also have a nice control plane, a management plane, um, a solution called Controller that we re released earlier this year. That's really mission control for your dynamic applications. It simplifies management, gives you that strategic command, and all the flexibility and agility that you, you desire as you want to be able to deploy your applications very quickly and flexibly. One example of this came from a household name in the genetics space. They had a hybrid application. If you remember the middle category that I talked about, they had a monolith that they were you know, migrating over time to leverage more and more microservices. And as a result, not only was there complexity on the right half of this chart, but they also had a lot of complexity to deal with on the left half of this chart. All the stack, that, you know, the daisy chain of tools that they had to stitch together to make their application work and get delivered the way they expected was a big concern for them. How do I make sure that all these things are compatible? How do I make sure that this, 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 this daisy chain of things that I put together is, is durable? Well, one of the things that they did was they leveraged our dynamic application gateway solution. They collapsed many of those tiers into one tier, which is the Nginx solution tier. And now our dynamic application gateway is giving them the capability to run the reverse proxy, the load balancer, their API gateway, all within a single instance, all within a single consistent interface, and all from a single uh, management plane. It's a huge reduction in the amount of complexity in their environment and the ability to really you know, feel more comfortable knowing that they're going to have the performance and availability they need for their application as they evolve it. So this is an exciting pattern that we're seeing more and more with organizations. And you know, this is you know, the type of thing that makes me very, very confident that we've, we're making the right decisions about you know, how we're architecting our platform. And so you know, what we're announcing today is that not only are we you know, strong in the load balancing side of things, but we're also adding API management capabilities to our platform. That's a big deal for us. And I'll talk a little bit more about what's going on there. And we'll be doing much more on the service mesh side of things to be able to help folks manage the complexity of their microservices environments as their environments grow and change. 
The, the foundational components of the Nginx platform are Nginx Plus, as I would expect most of you are familiar with. That's the solution that sits in the environment and makes decisions about how traffic flows back and forth. There's also Nginx Unit, which is our new dynamic application server that I'll talk a little bit more about. And then you know, kind of wrapping around that is our controller solution. That's our centralized management plane and control plane solution, which also has some newness that I'll talk about there. All right, so let me talk about what we did earlier this year, just to kind of bring folks up to speed in case um, you may have missed it. R15 showed up in the first half of this year. Um, that was really our introduction of the Nginx application platform. There were a number of features in there. There were things around clustering of state sharing, so individual instances could share information about which backends uh, users were connected to, so that if one were to go down, the other would be able to pick up seamlessly. Um, there were some features that we did to you know, increase our capabilities in the microservices space around gRPC support. We added HTTP2 server push support. Um, just goodness to you know, kind of flesh out our capabilities for the environments that customers were, were requiring us to run in. So that was a big release on the Nginx Plus side. On the controller side, back in early, well, in the Q2 timeframe, we released controller 1.0. That was a big deal for us. It was really about two constituents within the organization. One are the folks that are new to Nginx. You know, they're not Nginx experts, and they want an easy button of sorts to be able to quickly create a configuration and get up and running, knowing that what they've created is a solid and kind of blessed configuration. And so that's something we focused on for this first version. But in addition to that, we leveraged um, a solution that we'd already built that was really strong on the reporting and analytics side. It was a solution called Amplify. And with that came rich reports and a nice anal analysis capability. And so now, for experienced users and for the new users, we can give you great insight into what your Nginx instances are actually doing for you. You have great reports, great dashboards, and a very nice configuration analyzer. So you can take an existing configuration that may have grown over time, may have accumulated a lot of you know, extra lines of command, uh, controls, and we can run it through the analyzer and give a smart person some feedback as to you know, whether they might want to consider doing things a little bit differently. And so putting you know, that knowledge into that tool allows us to you know, provide recommendations and surface value um, as you think about how you can optimize your configurations. So that was an exciting release for us as well. And then the third thing that we released earlier this year was Unit 1.0. That's our multilingual application server. It went out the door um, with five languages supported. It was Perl, PHP, Python, Go, and Ruby. In addition to that, it's a fully dynamic application server. So no downtime required. You can make changes on the fly. It's lightweight. It's portable. It's high performance. It's all kinds of goodness. And that was a big deal for us, and we released that earlier this year as well. Now, that's what we did in the first half. Today, I want to talk to you about some of the cool things that we're releasing in the second half of this year. So first is Nginx plus R16. So this is really our dynamic application gateway solution. And we're really excited about this one, because not only is it unifying load balancing and API gateway and you know, microservices network into a single solution, a single instance capability, but all the capabilities that came along with it, the clustering of the key value store, uh, the clustered rate limits, you know, that really, again, allows you to take any number of instances you want that are network connected, obviously. They can share state. So now you can deploy across one cloud. You can deploy across multiple clouds. And now you can make sure that every instance is aware of everything that's going on. So if there's, for example, a bad actor out there, or a fraudulent transaction that's happening, or a user account that might be compromised, you can actually flag that and make sure that every instance knows what to do about that, independent of where that traffic might be entering a, an application from. It's a great way to provide you know, blanket level coverage of the knowledge needed to make the right decisions about what you want to have happen with your application. We also added some new load balancing capabilities, um, random with two choices, making sure you never make a bad choice, basically. You pick you know, two reasonably, you know, non-busy people, and you see who's the least busy of those two, and you're guaranteed to get a reasonably non-busy choice. So that's a good load balancing algorithm when you have lots of you know, backends or lots of you know, servers that are serving um, a given application. And of course, we added a few other protocol level features that we'll go into more detail on 
over the next couple of days. So that was a big deal for us. A little bit later this year, we're going to be making some enhancements to the controller side of things. So controller 2.0 is really focused on simplifying enterprise management at scale. So a couple of the things that we're making enhancements to are the workflows to allow folks to be able to handle multiple or many instances at once very seamlessly, in addition to being able to handle multiple versions of configurations more, more, more easily and you know, actually see the differences between the versions of configurations so you can do better analysis, easier, simpler analysis. And we're also adding you know, to our capabilities to send alerts to things like ServiceNow, and there'll be more of those types of alerting integrations to come as well. Now, that's one part of controller. Very exciting, but also a new part of controller that we're adding is, as I said, API management. Now, as I've talked to organizations and as we've done surveys, we found that over 40% of our customers are already using Nginx as an API gateway. And folks have been asking us, can we get tools, can we get solutions to help you know, simplify the management of those gateway solutions? And so, absolutely, we, we think that's a great idea. And so that's what we're doing. Um, we are building um, this solution now. It's going to have the ability to allow you to create com API configuration definitions very simply. So create your configuration, apply policies around rates, around authentication, around whatever set of things are appropriate for APIs, push those policies out, and then have great reporting on how it's doing. How is it being used? How, are your, your, how is your API performing? So a nice you know, bundle of capabilities to help manage those API gateways and, and allow you to deal with them a little bit more simply. So that's a big deal for us, and we're very excited about that. And then finally, last but not least, on the unit side, unit 1.4, taking that lightweight, portable, high-performance application server, dynamic application server, with built-in networking, and adding a sixth language, so node.js will be available, as well as dynamic certificate support, the ability to update and switch out certificates on the fly. Increasing the capabilities there you know, is, is very important to us as we think about how to merge in application kind of technology alongside networking technology, which provides some pretty interesting things that can be done in the future around east-west networking, especially around microservices. So we're excited about the trajectory that this solution is on as well. And it's not just about the things that we do within our product. Obviously, we're investing heavily in the features and capabilities that folks need us to work on. But it's also about the partners and the ecosystem that we sit in. It's equally as important to make sure that we're easy to deploy, we're easy to integrate, and we work with the solutions that you need us to so that you can get value out of our solution easily. So as you know, Gus mentioned, and as you'll, you'll see and hear more about, we've done some work with folks like Red Hat, where we are now an option for their ingress router in, in OpenShift. That's a great solution for us. We've done a lot of work on the Kubernetes side of things with our ingress controller solution that many of you guys have had some experience with. That's been a very popular download. We added a Prometheus integration uh, with our ingress controller so that now you can get great analytics um, for your, your traffic um, through Prometheus. And new today, we're announcing a few other things that we're doing. There's Amazon or AWS integrations for VPCs, or for their private link solution, where now you can have better networking between VPCs and traffic can flow more, effect more efficiently. We added the ServiceNow integration that I mentioned. And many of these vendors that you see here are actually here today. So I'd encourage you guys, when you have a chance, please do go and talk to them, because there's some really cool stuff we're working on together that we think you guys can benefit from. As we move to 2019, Keeping with the flexible and agile theme, there's a number of things that we're doing to help folks get up and running quickly with Nginx. So things like quick start templates. So making it so that you tell us what type of application or what type of API you're interested in delivering, and we can provide a scaffolding, right, a framework that allows you to plug and play you know, the things around the rate controls or the authentications that you require. So getting you up and, up to running, up and running quickly so you're not thinking about Nginx configuration, you're thinking about the use case that you want to be able to deliver. On the resiliency and efficiency side of things, we're building more and more tight integrations with alerting vendors, in addition to a few interesting optimizations and dynamic behaviors that we can build within our solution. More to come on that, but you know, making things faster, more efficient, less resource intense. 
And then finally, on the in intelligence and distribution side of things, we are working on a lightweight service mesh solution. Um, we also mentioned that we're working to integrate with Istio. We're working on both of those things. And one of the things that we're finding is, as folks deploy microservices and their complexity increases over time, there's a level at which you know, a full-featured, fully functional kind of service mesh rich solution could be required. But oftentimes, folks aren't quite ready for that yet. They're starting with microservices. They're starting to get a sense of you know, how that's going to evolve over time. And we think that the architectures we have and the capabilities we have within Nginx align very well to that journey that folks are taking, even within that microservices domain. And so there's a lot we, can be, there's a lot we are doing already with many customers today to help them solve those challenges and make sure that their applications, especially microservices applications, are working as effectively as they can. And so more of our energy is going to go into making sure that that evolution happens very, very smoothly. And then finally, the last thing we're going to be focusing on is a little bit more of our configuration analysis capabilities. We have an analyzer today. It gives nice insight into things you could be uh, looking at to tune up your Nginx configuration. And I think there's some more interesting things that could be done there to help you know, folks optimize their configurations as well. So those are the things that we're working on to really help you know, build this kind of organism that allows you to deliver the applications with the level of performance, the level of availability, the level of reliability and efficiency that you need um, for your customers. And it really is focused on aligning with the journey that either you're on or you're taking steps along, and making sure that wherever you sit in this, in this, in this diagram, you know, we have a strong solution for you for it, or if you're, making, or if you're evolving along uh, this modernization journey, we have a solution that will take you there as well. And with that, I'd like to bring Rob up to talk about what comes next. <laughs> 